Good afternoon guys, welcome to The Forge. Um, this RV we're going to cover something I've been asked a few times recently and that's how to heat treat O1 tool steel. Now, the difficulty here is that available is really only 20mm round from Yamico at the moment. Um, you can probably buy it flat from Bowler but it's going to cost you an arm and a leg and your first born child. Uh, so we're going to have to look at this as something that you're forging before heat treating. Um, if you do have it in flat bar, basically all you need to do is maintain it at 815 degrees Celsius for 10 to 30 minutes, I think is recommended, and then quench into oil. It's a nice deep hardening steel. Um, I mean, if you don't have any way of maintaining that temperature nicely, uh, if you're doing it in your forge, you could run into problems, you know, like uh, overscaling where you're going to lose carbon and other alloying agents from the steel. And it's just not going to perform 100% as well as it could when you could probably just invest in a cheaper steel like 1075 which doesn't need to be soaked and you won't run into those problems. Um, but as I said, this is a steel that um, you may have to forge. And with forging comes problems like grain growth and things like that. Uh, mostly because from time to time you might get something a bit too hot and you know the grains are going to grow. So my plan for this video is to forge two pieces about the same thickness. Um, one I'm going to normalise and grain refine and uh, you know put the extra effort in to make sure that I've got the best starting point for hardening. The other piece I'm just going to forge it out, grind it so it's got a knife shaped cross section then we're going to quench into oil. I'll snap those two pieces and hopefully we can see um, a difference between the two and uh, you know justify the extra steps in normalizing and grain refining. Now if nobody's told you yet, I'll suggest that you get a bucket of vermiculite. If you're forging any type of blade, having vermiculite to try and do like a bit of a um, you know a workshop anneal is a really good thing to have, especially if you're going to be drilling through things after the forging. Um, O1 has a tendency to air hunt. Um, if I was forging a blade I was going to sell rather than just some test pieces, I would go ahead and do a bit of a workshop anneal in the um, it's really cheap, it comes from Bunnings. Throw it in a bucket, heat your blade up to the recommended annealing temperature and then get it straight in. Um, be careful, it will hold its heat for hours after it's in the vermiculite. Not quite as good as maybe putting it in heat treating foil and throwing it into an electric furnace. Um, but, you know, it's a cheap and easy way of getting started, you know, trying to follow best practice. So it's recommended that O1 one still Start forging about 1060 degrees, I think it is. So I've just checked with the thermocouple. And we're rolling at about 1100 degrees now on the forge. Just marking out how much material I want to take away. I don't want to do it for this test. You shouldn't forge below eight. Okay, so I forged out a little analogs for tool steel. Um, tool steel knives. What I'm going to do is take what I'm going to call the dud, I've even stamped it D so I can't get them confused, and I'm going to take it straight out. It's at about 800 degrees in there um, at the moment, which is the right temperature for it to be quenched, and I've soaked it for probably I'd say five minutes. Um, this is directly after the forging, so it's like you haven't even taken it out to let it cool down to do any stress relieving or anything like that. And I'm just going to put it straight into Horton's G. Uh, the other knife I am then going to start grain refining um, and we'll see how that goes. If anything, it's honestly probably a little too hot. Hopefully that wasn't it cracking. I mean, a pretty, pretty spectacular argument for grain refining if it just cracked. So hopefully I've left these uh, a good enough shape that I can get some purchase on them to crack them during the uh, testing. And now, with the piece that we're actually going to uh, put some effort into fixing up after all the forging, I'm going to let it just cool in air um, down to black. Now, uh, best practice is to go from above 
the critical temperature for that blade still, and then around about the critical temperature and then one below for your three uh, grain refining cycles. Um, I tend to do it, I wait until the steel's black and then I go in for another heat. Um, so hopefully we'll be starting to homogenize the grain size by letting it cool down this way. So I'm going to reduce the temperature of the forge now. Cutting off the air a little more. This time I'll go for about non-magnetic temperature. Less gas, less air. I'll keep a magnet nearby to make sure it all goes to plan. That was probably a little too warm when I took it out. Spent too long fiddling with the camera. I'll just let that cool down anyway. I'll go for another one, lower temperature again, just where I know I'm at about magnetic. That's just becoming magnetic there. And I'll do one uh, below critical temperature. Just starting to take a bit of colour. Check it's non magnetic and then hold it in the still air again. Nice. That's not sticking at all. It's just got a bit of colour in it. Important thing to remember is uh, when cooling down, steel doesn't become magnetic again at the same temperature as it lost its magnetism. Um, that can be a trap for new players. I only want the blade to uh, basically still be magnetic. And then I'm going to, yep. As that cools down now, I'm just going to keep it in, you know, should be still air, but what I don't want to do is put it on top of the anvil where it's going to operate like a heat sink and differentially cool the steel. I'm starting to wonder whether I did give myself enough space here to actually crack these samples. It's still looking pretty meaty, but I guess I'll, um, I'll just grind them down. So what I'm going to do now is let it completely cool to room temperature. And then I'll begin the grinding machining. And we'll do a, uh, a hardening cycle on it and then we'll fracture the, sta uh, the sample. Guys, I'm just getting the uh, blade ready. Won't take very long. Remember we just want to get it to non-magnetic. A very low flame going on in there at the moment. Soaking the blade, probably about, I'd say hopefully about 10 minutes now, it's been at a pretty constant temperature. A little bit beyond what I'd like it to be at, but definitely nowhere near as bad as the uh, initial sample was. Let's get another check on there with the thermocouple. Okay, so the forge itself is about 900 degrees. I'm with mine, the best place for me to put a blade if I need to soak it is actually out here near the mouth of the forge. So that way I can concentrate on just getting the tip of the blade the right temperature without overheating it too much. See, the handle of this piece is still magnetic. Again, just about in a happy place. So I even it up again before I go into the Horton's G oil. Okay. Yeah, no crackles, snaps, or pops that time. Now I'll give this uh, blade analog a bit of a grind and then we'll do the snap test. So this is our good sample. 
Hopefully I'm strong enough to snap this thing. section on it. Ready. By the way, it did crack. Uh, it is what it is. Might actually be because it was a little too hot when it went in. But uh, yeah, let's see how the grains fared. Whoa. Disgusting. Yep. This is good. Okay, now I apologise for the fact that I can't zoom this camera in any closer and have it still be in focus, but even the way it is, you can see the piece that we didn't do any kind of uh, grain refinement to, we didn't even normalise it, we just took it out of the forge and straight into the oil. Um, the grains are huge, they're like pieces of sand. Um, in comparison, the piece that we did our normalisation grain refinement and uh, we let it cool down to room temperature, we soaked it at the correct temperature and then quenched. It's smooth and silky, kind of velvety. Um, and you can actually see um, near the spine where it's a bit thicker, um, the grain's there. Um, the steel was a bit more ductile when I snapped it, I could feel it. Uh, but right near the edge, they're super fine, which is just what you want for the edge of your blade. Um, I'll see if I can get some better images of these, but hopefully that goes to show kind of the uh, considerations you need to take into account when you're forging. If this was flat bar stock, you would probably be fine to maybe not even normalise, depending on, you know, you've got to, you've got to know the steel, you've got to do a few exper experiments on it, but um, it would hopefully be um, sorted out at the mill where it was produced. Um, so stock removal, not too much of this applies. You do still need to make sure you've got good temperature control when you do your hardening. Um, but yeah, for forging these rich alloys, you do need to repair the steel at the end of the day. Um, and I'm, I mean, there are people who know far, far more about this than I do. But that this is just kind of an example of how I do it in my workshop. Um, yeah, happy days. Hopefully you've learned something.